device, the next one is we're all the same down here, aka SCP-2375. But you won. <laughs> I'm fine, bookworm. Anyways. <laughs> Racist or not, I really don't want to know. <laughs> Alright. Anyways. Item SCP-2375. I just want money out of here to shut up. Object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. Due to the widespread nature of, of SCP-2375, permanent containment is currently not feasible. Instead, Mobile Task Force Zeta-28, Army of Darkness, I actually like that name, has been created for the sole purpose of identifying and terminating active colonies in instances of, of 2375-1 as well as working to prevent activities that would result in the spread of 2375. If an instance of, of 2375-1 is discovered in a populated area where it is possible for 2375 to spread, MTF Zeta-28 is to be dispatched immediately and must investigate the targeted area for possible colonies of Dash-2 instances. Should a colony of Dash 2 be discovered, agents of MTF Zeta 28 are instructed to eliminate any points of access for instances of Dash 2 to exit the area. Any further remaining instances of Dash 1 or Dash 2 are to be terminated immediately. Alright, description 2375 is a neurotic skin condition and its beginning stages capable of spreading through physical contact. Initial, system, system, uh, initial symptoms of 2375 include mild decay of the skin on the chest, increased senses of euphoria and pleasure, and a decreased ability to feel pain. Within, oh. yeah. <laughs> Within one week, the skin condition grows in size and intensity until the affected part of the body begins to resemble severely neurotic skin, although those affected with 2375 report no unusual feelings. The bodies of individuals affected with 2375 display no permanent damage to the insides of the body, appearing to suffer only physical decay. Approximately two weeks after an individual is first affected with 2375, the infection will spread to the individual's limbs, if available, and a lower torso. Individuals who reach this point of infection are designated instances of Dash 1. The subject will then attempt to convince bystanders to initiate physical contact with the subject in order to spread 2375. Humans with antisocial personality disorders are particularly susceptible to, to Dash 1's influence. Oh no. I can already tell they're going to do a something ableistic too. God damn it. Anyways. Dash one instances have been it, have been shown to engage in standard fundraising activities such as door to door recruiting, distri distri distribution of mail, leaflets, social events, and group therapy programs to gain opportunities to spread twenty three seventy five to humans who participates in these events. Participants in these events report a strong compulsion to interact with instances of Dash one that remains for approximately three hours after the conclusion of the event. Aside from containing instances of Dash one. Usually dressed in elaborate costumes or long clothing, no anomalous activity or atypical spread of 2375 have been reported during these events. Alright. 2375-1 Distributed Flyer Hello, friend. Are you feeling lonely, depressed, persecuted? I feel. We all feel like that sometimes. But don't worry, we can help you. Do you want to make new friends? Of course you do. We all do. That's why... We here at Local Fun Life Association want to, want to help you make them. We are currently inviting you to the dark, to a to an ice cream social at Data Redacted at noon tomorrow. Here you'll meet people around the community, enjoy some ice cream, and maybe make some new friends. Here's to a world where we can all just get along. Yours truly, your local Fun Life branch, Fun Life. Here we're all the same. What's it? That doesn't sound creepy. Yep. We're all the same down here. <laughs> Once an instance of Dash 1 has spread to 23, 
his spread 2375, and will attempt to retreat to a small, readily available 5x5 hole with 100 kilometers of the area or to create one if one is not readily available. These holes have been shown to lead to small subterranean caverns inhabited by mass quantities, quantities of Dash 1 instances. These caverns are identified by instances of Dash 1 as villages and consist of several small buildings that serve various purposes. Any instance of Dash 1 that is seen entering a village has not been shown to emerge again. Once in these villages, instances of Dash 1 enter the final stage of transformation into an instance of Dash 2. Underground, the subject's face begin, begins experiencing a rapid decomposition similar to the rest of the body. This is considered the final stage of infection. With 2375 as no Further damage to the body has been noticed. No instances of Dash 2 after, this, after the final stage decomposition have been seen to willingly re-emerge from their subterranean caverns, nor have any made in a, an attempt during Foundation raids. Experiment Log 2375-A Access Granted Welcome Site Director with the approval of the five members of the O5 Council, one D-Class personnel was permitted to be used by Site Director Pembroke as a test subject to analyze the inner workings of a normal human infected by 2375, as well as investigate the inner workings of a village inhabited solely by instances of 2375-1. An instance of Dash 1 was detained by Foundation agents in the neighborhood of Redacted, Kansas, and successfully contained for the purpose of, a, of the experiment in a standard humanoid containment cell at Site 77. D-2375-82, an African-American male who suffers from clinical depression, was introduced to a testing chamber containing the captured instance. Conversation Log 2375-A. D-2375-82 introduced to testing chamber within sight radius of Dash 1 instance. D-2375-82 sits in testing chamber such a is approached by Dash 1 instance. SCP 2375 1. Approaching D 2375 82. What's wrong, pal? Look at all that. D 2375 82. Of course, I'm down, you frick. I'm, I'm stuck in here as part of someone's freak experiment. Why should I never take this overstaying and death row? Fuck off. I got nothing else to say to you. I know how you feel, man. How the hell could you? The folks up in the conversation deck put me in here, too. But that's fine with me. Look around. We've got a nice room in each other. What more can we need? What are you talking about? I've been here. Where you are. You're depressed, aren't you? I can see it in your eyes. I used to be like that, too. But I changed, and now I'm happier than ever. What happened? I found Drugs. a place. Huh? Sorry, a bad joke. Drugs. Oh. <laughs> <You know>. <laughs> yeah. What happened? What happened? I found a place. A wonderful place. A place filled with people just like me and just like you. D-2375-82 is told to continue questioning Dash 1 instance. How do I get there? I can take you. Don't worry. You'll be safe there. Shake my hand, friend. D-2375-82 is instructed to shake hands with the Dash 1 instance. Welcome to the Unlife, brother. Shortly after his conversation, both the instance of Dash 1 and D-2375-82 were removed from the testing and placed in separate containment. Post-testing psychiatric screening of D-2375-82 reports significantly increased levels of euphoria and optimism. One week after D-2375-82's contact with, with the Dash-1 instance, a routine physical examination provided by Foundation agents and hazmat equipment revealed patches of skin on the arms and chest bearing qualities similar to of those of advanced necrosis. After this physical examination, a psychiatric examination was conducted by Dr. Pembroke to determine the extent of 2375's control over the brain. 
Dr. Pembroke. How are you feeling? D-2375-82. Not D-2375-82. Not gonna lie, Doc. Never felt this good. Something about that guy just rubbed me right, you know? Our, our physicians have detected severe damage on areas of your skin. Do you notice anything strange about your arms? Oh, the skin? That's nothing big. There's a small price to pay for an opportunity to feel a little better. That guy you introduced me to helped me see that. Can you explain further? What exactly drew you to this instance? There was something about him. The way you talked, the way you listened, no matter how rude I was, he didn't get mad. It was almost like he understood. Understood what? Everything, Doc. I could say the cruelest things, and he sat there, smiling and nodding. He listened to every word I said. There was some feeling in me that made me feel like I could trust him. He was just nice, you know? What made you feel that way? Well, it just felt like he cared. He wanted to help me. He had the voice and tone that made me feel like I could tell him everything. So when researchers told me to test his patience, I broke down and told him everything. All my stories from the streets, and he didn't bat an eye. It came to the point that I broke down, but he didn't laugh like most of you do. He knelt down and pat me on the back, and when it was okay, he made me feel alright, or nobody else bothers to. What do you feel now that he, he was been removed from the testing area? I don't feel lonely. I don't feel bad. To tell the truth, I feel like I have a new friend. Approximately three weeks after initial infection of D-2375-82. The subject was equipped with video camera and two-way headset for the purpose of gathering information regarding the underground ha habitats of instances of Dash 1. D-2375-82 was instructed to follow the test instance of Dash 1 into a small hole located 30 kilometers west of Site 77. The following is a transcript of the recovered footage. Dr. Pembroke, D-2375-82, can you clear me? D-2375-82. Loud and clear, big man. Following James now. James, is that the instance's name? Yeah, I never told you that. Oh, hold up. We're coming to something. It looks like a little town. Tom, could you explain? Uh, yeah. It looks like a little sl- Can I say that? Is that S word bad to say? I just realized I was muted. <laughs> it's fine to say slum. It's not a dirty word. Okay, because I've heard that used as an insult, so I wasn't sure. Well, those are people who who have feelings about people who live in less less well off areas. Okay, I just didn't want to say something bad and everyone go like, Great, exactly. no! There we go! <laughs> Slum is used as an insult by people who are classist. There we go, that's the word. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I just didn't want another bright no moment to happen. <laughs> anyway, I'll reread. Uh, yeah, it looks like a little slum village. They've got houses made of sticks and rocks that must have fallen down in the holes. Some of these look like shops. I think I can see what looks like a diner. Hell, there's even a little park with some that look like little kids. Do you notice anything strange about the village? Not really, other than the skin thing you told me about. This way, Jama. We got some friends I want you to meet. Coming. Sorry, Doc. I'll get back to you later. D-2375-82 proceeds to let the video camera down. I mean, proceeds to set the video camera down and runs towards several instances of Dash 1. Loud laughter and light conversation can be heard for roughly 30 minutes before the audio feed cuts out. 
Roughly five hours after the initial encounter with the other instances of Dash 1, the audio feed was resumed and the video camera was turned on by D-2375-82. Following this transcript of the final recording from D-2375-82, level 5 clearance required. Oh. Which is 05 clearance, if I believe. Yeah. D-2375-82. Hey, is this thing on? Can you hear me, Doc? Dr. Pembroke. D-2375-82. Yep, it's me. I said I would get you back. If there's one thing I can do, it's keep a promise. But listen, I want to talk to you. I want you to let me go. Excuse me. You won't believe this, but it's wonderful down here. I haven't even been around a day, and they're all treating me like the best friend. They've built me my own little house. They took me to a diner. We talked and laughed. I've been all over the town and haven't seen a single fight. I don't think I've seen people so little smile so much. Can you explain? I finally understand what this group is all about. They're not trying to take over the world. Well, the story is. Or, or, or whatever you guys believe they'll do. They, I'm sorry. We just want to live in peace. Live in peace? What does that mean? We've talked to the people down here. We all just want to get away from something. I've met people who were abused and beaten. But who can, who can put it all behind here? It's a place we can all forget our troubles and comfort each other. Where we're all the same. The skin condition is proof of that. The skin condition. It's, it's brilliant, actually. So many of us here have been prejudiced because of what we look like or what we believe. But now, thanks to fun life, we don't have to worry about that. When we're all the same, nobody has anything to fight over. We can focus on what brings us together rather than what keeps us apart. Listen, Doc, I know your foundation doesn't normally do this, but please, just leave us be. If not for me, then if then for everyone else down here. You are aware that the foundation is not able to permit the actions of your group. You realize you cannot continue to attack citizens as you do. All we want is to help others escape like we have. They've got nothing more to say if you want to listen. Goodbye, Doc. It's a fabrication... There has been no further communication with D-2375-82, or any instance of Dash-1 within a 300 kilometer radius of any Foundation site. Due to the nature of 2375, containment procedures have been downgraded from immediate termination to the process of sealing clusters of Dash-1 instances to prevent spread of the infection. At the time of this revision, downgrade of 2375 to neutralized status is, pen is pending review by the O5 Council. I will say that their thought process is really flawed. Yeah. Especially because people like me exist. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> people who are mixed were barely anything besides white. I mean, my brother looks less white, my sister looks less white. I am the palest, whitest one out of three siblings. Uh, my dad and his three siblings are all different skin tones, but that doesn't matter. I look white, but that doesn't matter. What matters is I'm not 100% white. Sometimes people don't care how you look. It's how they perceive what you look like. It, it doesn't matter. They'll find a reason to be racist. They'll find a way. If you're not white enough, they'll find it. Jaded, but I am jaded. Yeah. So, uh, before we do the thumbnail, I posted it. I have to go to the bathroom. So, I'm just going to leave this open. And you can discuss it with Bookworm. I'll be right back. Considering it's the only part that 
the that the article says corrodes in any way or is damaged is the skin, this would be an immediate bore because this image is showing more than just skin being damaged. And yeah. What's your opinion, Bookworm? Also, <clears throat> the article says it resembles narcotic skin. It doesn't say the skin starts falling off. So the skin changes in appearance, but it doesn't start falling. Nothing rots off. Yeah, there's no worms mentioned anywhere in the article. So it sounds like we both think this is a four out of four on terms of clickbait. Boo. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, us sitters are warm on the cookie and I don't remember that, that, them being there in the article. Yeah. Yeah, we were basically mentioning how in the article the only thing that's mentioned to be altered is the skin where in this image it shows more than just skin being altered also the skin is never to rot off it just looks narcotic yeah it's not actually falling off and they don't display any discomfort over their skin and its appearance yeah so it's a nonsensical image. It's clickbait. Yeah, I, I fear it would be a fort. <laughs> the second I looked at it, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> All right. Let's see if they fucked up the license. I see the critical frog. Okay. Let's go down here. Nope. They didn't miss it. Also, by the way, even though this can get disturbing for some viewers, they got rid of the disturbing warning. Well, that's not disturbing for some people. People under a certain age just shouldn't be watching this. Yeah. Let alone just how it can disturb viewers. Yeah. So are we ready? For the brain rot? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if Bookworm's ready. Would you like to join us, food? No? Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Alright, so everyone's ready. Then in three, two, <clears throat> one. The doorbell rang. An odd time for a visitor. Did you hear the bell? Make yourself useful for once and get it, will ya? Who would be at the door at this time of night? She walked to the door and hesitantly asked. Who is it? Girl Scouts, ma'am. We have some delicious cookies this year. Um, isn't it a bit late? Shouldn't you be home? Oh, I will be soon. You're my last stop for the night. You really need to try these, please? It's the Girl Scouts. Yeah? And? 
Buy some. Jeez, can't you think on your own for once? She opened the door. What stood before her wasn't at all what she had expected. Oh, now they add it. They add it. Welcome back. <laughs> Today I bring you. <laughs> After they show the inaccurate version of the SCP. Yeah. Oh, she was afraid of the thumbnail. She would be the scouts. <laughs> Honestly, they could show the kid covered head to toe in green skin, and it would still be more accurate than their current depiction. Yeah, but did, did you also notice? They immediately added, like, misogyny at the very beginning. Yeah. <laughs> like, there are other groups you could use for this. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yes, I noticed. Oh, my God. All right. Anyways, three, two, one. SCP-2375. We're all the same down here. Do we know anything else here? Not much. She just turned up out of the blue to their house, selling cookies. Clearly, we'll need to take a closer look at the necrosis on her skin. What about the parents? They're, they're both exhibiting signs of infection as well. Yes. The odd thing, though, is there seems to be a shift in their personalities, their attitudes. Mr. and Mrs. Stevens, how are we today? Hey, never better. Fantastic. That's good to hear. Uh, we just wanted to ask you a couple questions regarding your interaction with the Girl Scout. That lovely girl? Of course, go right ahead. Don't you want to remove Oh my gosh, I just saw Bookman's message. He has to be a misogynist because that's how you, you know he likely has antisocial personality disorder. Also, I'm going to comment that it never said that abusers get infected as well. Yeah. It sounded like it went for the abused, not the abuser, and he was literally an abuser. Yeah. Wait, would that mean that they would get aggressive over abusers? I don't know. It doesn't say how they react to abusers. Yeah. I think they just avoid abusers and do their own shit. Yeah. Anyways, let's continue. Zutho looks mighty hot. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, pardon the bluntness, but you two have a history of police visits, noise, neighbor reports, domestic disturbances. Oh, that's all in the past. We're very happy now. Okay. Since when? Well... Since that little girl, she really opened our eyes. <laughs> We're much better now. Yes, much better. Chen whispered to Kloss. Alarm bells, ding, ding, ding. Hi, I'm Greg. What's your name? Chen. Do you have a first name, Mr. Chen? Agent. Right. You seem like the perfect person to join our club. Just Wait, why take my hand. Like I promise you'll be. I don't know. I know nothing about him. Right. This this doesn't seem like how the SCP is supposed to be acting. Yeah. Feel much better soon. The man stepped toward. So the guy, what to be very accurate, he had the woman leave her husband. <laughs> it's Chen. Hand outstretched. One more step, and I well, will take drugs. your hand. That would be accurate. Yeah. A drug. Permanently. Kloss nodded towards the door. Let's go back and talk to the little girl. This infection clearly seems to alter personality or perceptions. How much you want to bet? We're about to talk to the happiest little girl scout you've ever met. Hi there. So nice to meet new friends. Can I give you a hug? I will give you a hug. It'll be the last. Hi. Don't mind him. He's a little um, grumpy this morning. SCP-294. Under maintenance again? Where are you supposed to get a cup of joe then? That's oh okay. my god. So, 
What happened to your skin? My skin? Oh, this? That's nothing. Small price to pay for happiness, don't you think? Happiness? Well, sir, unlife is fantastic. What's unlike? This is a first. They replaced a guy with a girl. Yep. They did it the opposite. <laughs> Wait, this makes it worse. Because the girl's white, right? The guy yep. was an African American. Oh. <laughs> It's so nice. Not only well, is no, it gender swap. African American was uh, technically they replaced African American with the uh, woman and her husband. Oh, that's worse. Yeah. Oh, that's worse. Yeah, which means not the only did they switch gender. The person she's replacing was someone of an unknown race because their skin had already gone narcotic. Yeah. So there wasn't a distinct color to it. Besides, you know, yeah. probably green or something. Wait, do we know if the dash one instance gender? I do not know. I think it was... Yeah. No. It doesn't look like it. I, I think, think they were male. Because of how they speak later about okay. following him and their friends. Wait, no, they did give a name. I forgot it was further down. James. James. So Dash One is male. So they did gender swap. They gender swapped and they gave them a race. <laughs> And they removed the black man. <laughs> and they aged him down. Yep. Alright, let's keep going. Life. Basically a whole different Did character. It? Yep. You say unlife. Oopsie. I meant fun life. I'd be happy to show you. Just take my hand and then I can bring you there. Hang on to that thought. So what's the plan, Doc? You heard the little girl. Why she is there a Ghostbuster? <laughs> right. But she also wants to infect us. Luckily for us, we have a whole division <laughs> dedicated to just that. <laughs> the D-Class sat in her cell. <laughs> they flashed UV lights and started spraying. But the thing is, you wouldn't get the infection unless you're touched. Yeah. They didn't get touched, which means the infection wouldn't be know. on them. Staring at the floor. Yeah. From what they had gathered, the more depressed or antisocial the person was, the more allure SCP-2375 would have for them. Claus and Chen walked uh, into her cell. Okay, so with that pale girl? Yep, because look, D-2375. <laughs> That's one, not three. Bookworm, how are you holding up? <laughs> Fucking erasing all the black people out of this. <laughs> Why don't you get added at the very end when they start reading the document? <laughs> I'm doing okay. All right. I have no expectations of that. Let's keep going. Yeah. Know what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the girl wants. Basically, we'll be with you the whole way. Sure you will. I've heard that before. As they looked into the cell, the little girl spoke to the D-Class. So far, it didn't seem to be having any effect. 
the little girl slowly reached out and put her hand forth. The D-Class recalled slightly and then slowly extended her hand to shake it. They were told to do it. The infection would now start. They just had to give it time. It's starting to appear on her skin. And it's almost time to talk to her again. What do you expect we'll find? I think there's others like them. Perhaps a whole colony. The unlife. Or as she said, the fun life. <laughs> hmm? The way they're going about it is unrealistic. Yeah. I mean, they already knew there were colonies before the instance they captured. They just didn't know what happened in those colonies. Yeah, I just, I find it funny that we already got ableism. We got, we got misogyny. No, it went from misogyny to ableism to racism. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of terrified what they're going to throw next. Let's find out. <laughs> They're gonna throw in some sexism. <laughs> right. You think they're hazardous? Do you know of any type of highly contagious necrosis that isn't? Gotcha. We're going in hot. Damn right. It looks like necrosis, but we do not know if it's not. We just. There's no evidence showing it's actually decaying their skin. It just makes it look decayed. Yeah. As they stood outside D 2375 2 cell, she seemed different. As she looked up to see them, she smiled. Hey, Doc. Agent, how's life? D class. You see him? Chipper? Oh, I am. I am. That little girl really helped me out. I haven't felt this good in years. Chen leaned towards Kloss. Fishy. Very fishy. Don't trust her. That's great. Ready for a field trip into the fun life? You bet. Hold back. Maintain a 500 meter gap to them. Let's see uh, where they're going. Up ahead, oh the little girl in the D-Class move forward. Now free to yeah. vent. Plus, none of the Foundation agents went inside. They used a camera. That's right, they used a camera. They didn't fucking stalk her. Yeah. Sure, where they would. As evening came, they saw them stop in the distance. I can't, why did they use the when day breaks sun? When they draw a sun at dusk? I don't know. <laughs> they don't know how to draw. Because <laughs> if you see that sun, you're good as dead. <laughs> well, you technically don't die. But it wouldn't be really living. Right? Yeah. They don't know how to draw. Except right. Move on. Sorry, I was just talking about when day breaks. Sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Anyways, that's well, good. Like I said, I don't think they're intentionally doing it. Yeah. I think they're just stupid. <laughs> oh my god. bad at drawing. Right, let's continue. MTF Zeta 28. Hold up. They seem to have stopped. As Chen watched the tracking dots. The signal seemed to flicker and disappear. What the? They've disappeared. Army of Darkness, move in. What? They reached the final location of the D-Class and the little girl, but they could see nothing. It was just an empty field. How'd they just disappear? Should we go back and get the parents? Not yet. <coughs> Keep searching. In the distance, an agent called out. Got something! Hidden by some brush. They would be wearing was a hole suits. Covered with a piece to of protect plywood. them. This must be it. Suit up. We're going in. They descended the rope. The gap was tight. That would not be the type of suits they would wear. I know. It would be more lightweight. They don't know how to draw that. Yeah. No more than one meter wide. It was pitch black. Like that one. It probably hadn't been the best <laughs> idea to pursue at nightfall. As they descended, they began to see some light. Then, the sound of music and people drifted up towards them. As Chen descended through an opening, he found himself inside a large underground. Or an acid trip. I don't know. <laughs> we have an acid trip watching these. <laughs> uh. <laughs> cavern. He reached the floor. In front of him were stores, buildings, a park, 
and even a cinema. People walked about as if this was a normal evening. All of them, their skin heavily covered in necrosis. In the distance, the D-Class came walking towards them. Slow it down. Keep your distance. Don't be afraid, Agent. Isn't it wonderful? Welcome to Fun Life, where everyone is the same. Once you're here, you'll never want to leave. SCP-2375 is a necrotic skin condition in its beginning stages, capable of spreading through physical contact. Initial symptoms of SCP-2375 include mild decay of the skin on the chest, increased senses of euphoria and pleasure, and a decreased ability to feel pain. The bodies of individuals infected with SCP-2375 display no permanent damage to the insides of the body, appearing to suffer only physical decay. Approximately two weeks after the individual is first infected with SCP-2375, the infection will spread to the individual's limbs, oh my God. if available, and lower torso. Individuals who reach this point of infection are designated instances of SCP-2375-1. The subject will then attempt to convince bystanders to initiate physical contact with the subject in order he to would spread SCP-2375. Humans with antisocial personality disorders are particularly susceptible to SCP-2375-1 okay, influence. <laughs> SCP-2375-1 instances have been shown to engage in... So I'm pretty sure that's not how hazmat suits would work. That is correct. That is not how hazmat suits work. ...standard fundraising activities, such as door-to-door -door recruiting, distribution of mail leaflets, <laughs> social events, and group therapy programs to gain that's opportunities... Like if the hat was that easy, not hat, the, the top part, the, the lid, whatever the fuck you'd call it, if it was that easy to remove, that would suggest it was not safe in the first place. One of the key things about a hazmat suit is it being completely sealing the person in. Yeah. Can't call it sealing if you can just go whoop. Alright, ready to continue? Yeah, sorry. To spread SCP-2375 to humans who participate in these events. Social events and group therapy programs to gain opportunities to spread SCP-2375 to humans who participate in these events. Once an instance of SCP-2375-1 has spread SCP-2375, it will attempt to retreat to a small, readily available 5x5 hole within 100 kilometers of the area or to create one if one is not readily available. These holes have been shown to lead to a small, subterranean caverns inhabited by mass quantities of SCP-2375-1 instances. These caverns are identified by instances of SCP-2375-1 as villages and consist of several small buildings that serve various purposes. Underground, the subject's face begins experiencing a rapid decomposition similar to the rest of the body. No instances of SCP-2375-2, after the final stage of decomposition, have been seen to willingly re-emerge from the subterranean caverns. Due to the widespread nature of SCP-2375, permanent containment is currently not feasible. Instead, Mobile Task Force Zeta-28, Army of Darkness, has been created for the sole purpose of identifying and terminating active colonies of instances of SCP-2375-1 as well as working to prevent activities that would result in the spread of SCP-2375. I highly doubt they would drop a fucking nuke. Down a hole. <laughs> yeah. Left out happened to us all. You're not alone in that. However, be wary of who comes to you in your time of depression and what they ask of you. Their intentions might not be altruistic. As always, have a... They never seem to understand the SCP we read! Harry, removal of characters slash license. They- oh. all of them. They- they removed all of them. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't keep the doctor, they didn't keep the D-class, they didn't keep the infected. Yeah. Added gore or violence? Wait, hold on, I need to look back. Four. Did it actually? No, two. Two. A two? 
Well, they didn't really add that much. They didn't really add much violence. Yeah, oh, it does have mild decay of skin. Well, it says mild de decay of skin, and it and it looks narcotic. But it doesn't say other parts of the body decays. Yeah. The only thing that it says, it specifically says the other tissue is healthy. And in all those pictures, I mean, not pictures, and all the video clips, look back at them and tell me if it's showing only skin damage or more than skin. Because to me, it looks like more than skin. It's also including tendons and other things. Yeah. All right. So, it yeah. feels like the incorrectness of how they display it is a variant of violence in itself. Yeah. Us. Also, they mm -hmm. keep, kept showing the SCP as more aggressive than it sounded in the article. Oh, yeah. Us. Also, deviates from the plot of the article. Four. Yeah, it, it, it changed a lot. I'm not even going to discuss the last one. With, with misogyny, yeah, ableism, okay. racism. Yeah. 10%. Actually, we could probably mark the two to a three if we really think about it. Oh. Yeah. Not a four, but definitely a three. So again, another 5%. But it's not a zero! <laughs>